I got no drip in my pocket Must've forgot it or maybe I already lost it Don't got enough to go cop it, I'm about to take off like a Rocky Houston, we might have a problem, but that don't mean money on solve em. No, that don't mean money on solve em. There's a thin line between life and death. An SV Twiz film that shows the truth about what's going on in the hood. So yeah, cousin, if you gonna be able to help me out with this job, like I need this one bro bad, like I'm not trying You've seen the rest. Now it's time to see the best. Starring Vodka Thousand Proof and SV Twiz. A hood drama that shows you the meaning of money, power, and respect. Torn apart. Yo, you really doing your thing with that girl. Black, what's up, nigga? I can't call it, bro. Hey, yo. Watch it now on YouTube at Life with the Philly Fam. Yeah, man. Salute to you for that, man. It's, it, that's a that's a beautiful platform to have because you're cutting out the middleman. You know what I'm talking about, and also mm -hmm. you're really helping out your own people. You know what I mean? People. I have talent and things of that nature so definitely salute to you for that Appreciate you know it. you are ready so next i gotta ask you um let's talk about the merch capone you know what i'm talking about the cat you know what i'm saying <laughs> cat back you know what i mean let's talk <laughs> about that um where can where can people get your merch at and um you know what made you get into merch because i've been looking around and like a lot of people been having your merch mugs all types of things man it, it definitely it's definitely heavy man um merch comes from a strong portion of believing in yourself when i first came home from prison i wanted to write a book and i went to a publisher and the publisher says well who are you he said i know who you are but who are you and i was like what do you mean I'm Capone. I got a story. I've been to prison. I, I sold drugs. He said, everybody does. What makes your story special? He said, make a mark and make a name for yourself. When you make a name for yourself and people start to believe in you, they will do anything for you. They will support you. And I came out and I've been on top of my comedy game forever. And so I create venues and companies that will put me in a position to never be forgotten. Capback is a, just basically an internet television show where people get on, they can express themselves, adults, you know, they talk about it and they love it. And so they represent the show. Now my queen shirt, which is probably one of my most successful shirts, it's a rep, you know, a representation of black women. And the reason I'm so hard on that one because of my mother, my mother was a real pure black woman. And I saw a white lady no, a black woman with a shirt on that said, kiss me, I'm Irish. And it fucked me up because I've never seen anybody, no white, no Latino really or nothing that represents, you know, or, or give homage to black people. And so I made a shirt that simply is a black woman with an Afro with, with thick lips. And uh, I called it queen and it represents my mother and every mother out here. That's a mother. Wow. And so it's been successful. It's always something behind it. Like my story, I grew up in the projects. My mother died at the age of 40, 47 from brain aneurysm. Oh, I'm and sorry I, to hear that. No, it's cool. And I promised her I would never do anything illegal again. And my shirt that came out for that was Mama, We Made It. It's not about me. It's about us. It's always been about us. And so I try to spread the love, period to uplift black women because, you know, they take it harder than any other race in the world. 
And we have to protect us every way we can. That's a fact. That's a fact. That that's real deep. You know, it it kind of hit that right there kind of hit me a lot different because it's like, you know, me young growing up, I definitely grew up like in the struggles and things. But um, you know, when I was 12, falling on 13, my sister had got murdered. Um, her baby father had stabbed her over 60 plus times. He tried to cut her heart out, had her land like she was on a cross. And um, I started being the hothead. My mom raised me, father was never in the household. I was being the hothead, but I didn't realize the pressure that I was putting on my mom from being in the streets right. and hustling. Even to this day, my mom be like, you know, I'm so glad that you made a better decision for your life. I got four kids now and blessed with a wife and everything. And she still talked to me like, you know, it was plenty of times I hear gunshots talk like, outside at nighttime hoping it wasn't you behind right. the barrel or getting shot you know what i'm talking about and um that's actually what got me into you know trying to start doing film because when i was young i was like getting like i went to like glenn mills and things of that nature and then when i was 18 i was in and out the county and um i started writing a book and i was like you know what i would love to put this in the film, you know what I'm talking about? I would love for this to be a movie, but before that movie gets created, I have to be excellent at it. You know, it has to be presented properly, got to be detailed perfectly and everything. So, right. you know, that right there, what you said, just touched me a lot, man. So definitely um, salute to you and, and, you know, salute to your mom and all the mothers out there, all through the hoods that a lot of young brothers, we put our parents through these stress, you know, these stressful issues, you know what I mean? But we don't realize it at the time because we just want to have J's on our feet, you know, had it the close up the par and things of that nature. So definitely salute to the mothers around the world. But I'm going to move on, you know, and um, I would like to speak on Capone about your relationship with Shaq because I heard out of my own ears that Shaq spoke very highly of you and if i'm not mistaken if he didn't put you in the top three he put you in the top five comedians of all time how did your relationship come about you know and um basically that's pretty much it how did your relationship come about and um you know how did it continue to you know to uh to for y'all to have a relationship should i say um i think Shaq is 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 in is Incredible human being. Um, with all that he has, he never forgets where he came from. And one of the most powerful things about Shaq is that he listens to his people. There's a lot of people that's on top that don't listen to people. Shaq's assistant told him, you need to see this man. And he was talking about me. The first time he came to see me, he says, uh, you know, they went through my agent and said they wanted me on this tour. And uh, it was, uh, I, I was supposed to be the opening act and I wind up the headliner of the Shaq All-Star Tour. And Shaq personally took me under his wing and told everybody that he handpicked me, which is another reason that I do what I do for young comedians is because that sometimes you can be just extraordinary in your line of work but it don't mean shit if you ain't got those avenues to present yourself at. So I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm a big shot. And I'm not, but I really have love for my people. I really have love for people who, who struggle, struggle with, with trying to make it and, and just need that shot. And, you know, and I've been stabbed in the back with, you know, these fake ass people, but I don't ever, turn my back on anybody because I know where my blessings come from. And I say this to you to say Shaq, Dame, Bruno Mars, those were blessings to me because these guys didn't have to look at me. They were on the top of their game doing what they did. When I opened up for Bruno Mars at the Apollo, he was like, I've never seen nobody like you. And, I'm, you know, I'm humble. I learned to stay humble. I've learned to not be an asshole. And what an asshole is, is somebody who thinks that they're deserving of something that they don't work for. Wow. And so 
I put my heart and soul into everything I do, even the people that I surround myself with. I've been friends with some guys for since I was a little kid, but you'll never catch them in my camp. Because I don't get attached to, you can see, as I can say, bullshit a mile away. And that's, that's that. True. That's true. And, and you know, with you speaking on like your people, man, I also noticed in the past, you have done something that no comedian has ever done before. And that was with you understanding that in the hood, people are on stamps. People are waiting for first of the month checks. They might be working paycheck to paycheck. They might have thirty dollars to their name. It was a time where you was doing the stand up show. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it was. Where was it out? Michigan or somewhere? Wherever it was, you did a special, a limited time special, where you told people, you know what? I understand the struggle was real. I'm gonna do a three dollar ticket special for y'all for this limited time. How did that come about, man? Because that was a very generous thing and people might not understand it because like, you know, when y'all going out and performing on them stages, that's work. And you know, you have a big name, but what you have in your name, you didn't forget about your people. What what in your heart made you, you know, look out for the people that's less fortunate that might have $70 to their name? I'm gonna tell you this story real quick. And I try not to get emotional because this is probably one of the emotional, most emotional things that I've ever seen in my career. I was performing in, in um, South Africa. And uh, I was performing with a guy named David Kyle. And I had never met David. This was my first time meeting him. And David is like goddamn Eddie Murphy in South Africa. I'm talking about thousands, thousands of people. We were in a restaurant eating and thousands of people surrounded the restaurant. I'm talking about people, not, not everybody's poor. Eh? I mean, just people, uh -huh. people like David, touch my baby, you know, shit, shit like that. So I'm sitting there dumbfounded, like, what the fuck? Who is this dude? And so there was a white man that walked in through the crowd. And he sat down and he hit me on the shoulder and he said, oh, so you're the you're the reason all of this craziness is going on in South Africa. And I said, what do you mean? He said, man, they talking about you everywhere. The radio stations, the TV shows, they they can't believe how funny you are. And so I took it as, you know, compliment. And I just said to him, I said, well, you'll see, um, you know, if you come to the show tonight, I'm quite sure you're somebody being that you made it through all of these people <laughs> and sat down with us. Mm -hmm. So he said, yeah, well, I, I got to get a ticket. So I said, Dave. And Dave said, come on, don't do that. And I didn't know what he meant. And so I'm not going to lie to you, it fucked with me. So we got to the venue and I couldn't help it. I said, Dave, man, you know, this guy walked through all these people. Who, who is he? That's how I started it. He said he's the regional manager for the whole South Africa of Mercedes Benz. So I'm like, well, what the fuck did he have to worry about getting a ticket for? He said, Capone, why should I treat him special? He said, this is my friend. He said, he gave me and my wife cars on our anniversary. He said, but we don't know what those people had to do to get their money. And just because he's a millionaire, should he just walk in? And we accept his money over everybody else that struggle to come see us. And I said, oh. They fucked me up. And he has the whole South Africa humble like that to where you don't sit around because you got money because we spoil. If Shaq walks in, we're going to let him right in. We're going to rush him. <laughs> he don't give a fuck if it was Michael Jackson. You have to buy your ticket on time or you will not get in there. And that fucked me up. I'm not even gonna lie to you. It changed my whole perspective of humbleness. Wow, that, that's that's real deep right there. That's And like you said, that's a fact. You know, over here in America, we, we spoiled, 
you see a certain face like, oh yeah, let him man, forget everybody else. You know what I mean? Person could have been sta- saving up for six yeah. months to come to your show. You know what I mean? They get treated like crap. Might not even get an autograph. You know yeah. what I mean? Wow, yeah. that's deep, man. And so that's why I continue to give back. You know, God has blessed me in so many ways. Like I said, I'm not religious. I'm very spiritual. I talk to my crystals. And uh, anything you want in this universe, man, you can have. You just have to know it, and you have to have a determination to get it. I'm not saying give it to me. Just give me a job so I can get it. And that's it. That's simple. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. People struggle, but a lot of people getting these things, you know, from just believing in themselves. 